Breitbart. December 1776 was one of the darkest times for America. Hyperinflation gripped the economy. Washington's army lost one battle after another. The mood of the country changed from optimism to defeat. But on Christmas Day, Americans amid a raging nor'easter crossed an impassable ice-filled river, surprised and killed an expertly trained enemy, and changed the course of history. Thomas Paine captured the days leading up to Christmas of 1776 in the American Crisis. Washington's army had lost one battle after another. The economy had tanked, and the paper money the United States printed seemed worthless. Americans were abandoning the cause in droves. During the fall of 1776, the British issued an amnesty proclamation that offered pardon and protection to rebels who signed an oath of loyalty to the king within 60 days. Thousands of Americans, including several members of Congress, clambered to sign the oath. One disgusted American patriot recalled, to the disgrace of the country and human nature, great numbers flocked to confess their political sins to the representative of majesty and to obtain pardon. It was observed that these consisted of the very rich and the very poor, while the middle, middling class held their consistency. Making matters worse, the enlistments for the Continental Army expired in December of January 1st of 1777. Most Americans could read, and the pamphlet immediately raised the morale of both the military and civilians. The looming prospect of disaster seemed to spur Americans into action, and some even believed that such a crisis was necessary to give people the proper motivation to fight. Our republic cannot exist long in prosperity, Dr. Benjamin Rush later wrote in a letter to John Adams. We require adversity and appear to possess most of the Republican spirit when most depressed. The crisis had a direct positive effect that steeled resolve. That December, 245 years ago, marked a period where Americans from all stripes came together to alter the course of history in a great counteroffensive on Christmas night. On the eve of the battle, General George Washington sat in his tent on the banks of the Delaware River and methodically wrote the same three words over and over on several small pieces of paper. He had decided on a daring plan, crossing the ice-choked Delaware River and mounting a surprise attack on the Hessian garrison there. Knowing that the assault could not hope to succeed if word of the plan reached the enemy, he detailed a Virginia to serve as sentries around the Patriot camp. The general himself selected the password for the night, and that was what he was writing on scraps of paper for distribution to the unit commanders. While the Surgeon General of the Continental Army was visiting Washington, one of the slips happened to fall to the floor. I was struck with the inscription on it. The physician wrote, it was victory or death. Now, contrary to the myth perpetrated by many children's books, the Hessians in Trenton were neither drunk or, nor idle. Their e experienced commander, Colonel Johan Rall, the hero of White Plains, Chatterton's Hill, and the breakthrough of Fort Washington, kept his men in constant readiness and on patrol. A series of raids by the local militia in the prior days had put them on edge, and the men slept dressed and armed. The Americans had won a great victory, but they had little time for rest. Washington needed to capitalize on the victory at Trenton by eliminating the other British troops garrisoned in New Jersey. Now think about it. This changed everything during the revolution. Everyone thought it was all done. They had certain individuals in Congress, the rich, saying, yes, I pledge my loyalty to the British forces, the king and everything else. While the other people said no. It might be dark now, but I think we can win this.